What's happening, everybody? It's Monday. We're going to review the week. Who were the studs? Who were the stinkers? And go through some of that unfortunate injury news. Do not miss a single second of today's show. Zorro.com is where you'll find everything you need for business of any size in almost any industry. They have tools, equipment, and supplies for everything you need, whether you need stuff for industries like electrical, plumbing, manufacturing, or more. Zorro's, they, they got it from brands you know and trust. And Zorro.com offers amazing customer service from real people based in the U.S. Visit Zorro.com slash footballers to sign up for Zmail and get 15% off your first order. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thank you, Jason. Yep. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Monday, September 30th. We're back again. Hope your team is hanging on. Mm. I plan on hanging on <clears throat> yes. immediately following this show. Mike and I were in a spirited, oh, yes. spirited pre-show debate <laughs> yes. for no good reason. We're sitting here. We're getting ready to go. Brooks is turning dials, and we're talking about the fact that I believe that I could hang from a bar for a long period of time, especially if my life depended on it. So we were kind of talking about drones flying around, and if people had to hold on to these drones, to fly. it was a stupid conversation. It was but no, then Mike no, no. Bet it was me, life changing. But now Mike bet me a hundred dollars. Yes, that I can't hang, free hang from a bar for five minutes. Yeah, I'll look. Which will now end up on our social media it, because I accepted this bet, and then I'm so Al, happy, and then Al Borland chose to match it. So I have $200 if I just hang from a bar for five minutes? I don't know which side of this I'm on. And here's what else. I'm so happy you're bringing this up because now your shame will be public. Correct. If you make it two minutes, I will be freaking shocked. Okay. Shocked. Okay. Really? This, you're yes. You're blowing my mind here. So Mike seems so confident. He really does. Are you scared? No. I mean, I'm not worried about this it. This is going to be great. I, the only thing I'm worried about, to be honest, is we have like a pull-up <laughs> bar in the office. And, like, I'm tall, so I'm going to have to, like, lift my legs up. Is that built into your thought process here, Mike? No. Because if I could free hang instead of having to lift my legs you still for five would, minutes. You still would not make it anywhere close to five minutes. You're going to be real wrong, Mike. <laughs> You're going to be real wrong. All right, welcome into the show. Today we've got a uh, jam-packed podcast episode. we got Weekly Rewind. we got the Stud Muffins. we got the Stinkers of the Week. Jason is serving as tribute for all of you out there who are in the business of scoring a lot of points and still losing in fantasy football. I am your leader. <laughs> second consecutive week, he scored the second most points in league of record and lost to I'm, a different point leader. Yeah, I'm 0-2 in two. in two weeks where I've I've put up 300 points in two weeks, which, which is like, that. I mean, that's, that's a, a lot of that's points. That's a guaranteed 2-0. What I decided is I will be looking at next week's opponent and choosing their players for my starts of the week. Right. Because whoever, that, playing is whoever you're playing. Uh, we, we put it out on Twitter. We asked for your reactions to the weekend. We've got another Monday Pun Day. Oh! oh. Got some sophisticated music for Monday Pun Day. We're taking the Pun Day to a new level. Yes. We've got <laughs> No BJ. Oh, 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 that's a good one, chap. Oh, well, Beckham. Oh, oh nice. We've got Gallman Joy. Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes you feel like a nut. That's a... <laughs> Sometimes you don't. Gallman Joy's a good one. The Foot Clan bringing it. Better call Gall? Oh, for Gallman. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Uh. Hubba Chubba? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I like this one. Someone said, new tight end, who dis? Yeah. That's there we one. go. Uh, that would be Will Disley playing the, the Cardinals. The freaking violins are killing me right now. Dak it's amazing. Presk not. Oh, yeah. Get bodied, Dak. What or is that, like Dak. a Borat? Did <laughs> Borat write that one in? Dak Presk not. Dak Mescot? Like oh, he, well, that like was he just, made a mess? It was just all the same thing. And then Austin Hoop. There Hoop. it is. Hoop. Oh, there it is. 
So very sophisticated Monday reactions to the weekend. Yeah, I mean, it was... It's a sophisticated sport we play, really. Well, sure, we take it very seriously, yes. you can tell. And uh, all I'm really thinking about at this point is whether I can hang from a bar for five minutes. So we'll see what happens. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. As opposed to what Brooks put into our show doc, which is the fantasy foot bass lures. <laughs> which is probably not Brooks' fault, but I'll blame him because today I've never, 750 shows, I've never seen the foot bass lures. That's our new spinoff. <laughs> it's about fishing. Now, we do have a couple updates for you before we get into the weekly rewind, some injury news, notes, and updates. We've got the stud muffins. Uh, now, hmm. we did win yes. a podcast award yesterday. Oh, huzzah! We won the our fourth consecutive yes. People's Choice Podcast Award. Shout out to the Foot Clan. We, yeah, we really didn't make a lot of fanfare for the voting on this one. We appreciate all the support that you guys have given us, and uh, we were thrilled to have uh, won it. The Foot Clan is undefeated. You guys are amazing. You're always pulling more weight than we deserve, for sure. So we thank you genuinely for going out and voting for us. Yes, thank you. Making it happen. And also, those of you out there that are also spitwads, we, look, we started a new comedy podcast, the Spitballers Podcast, and... Uh, Spitwads. They yeah, came out. They did. And we won the best comedy podcast in our first year. That's exciting. Yeah, if you so if you've been missing out on the Spitballers, that show's been going strong now every Monday for for a little bit over a year. Yeah. Yep. So thank you to everybody who voted for either of our shows. We appreciate that. It's always pretty cool to get that validation. We do a lot of shows every year and it's a lot of fun. Yep. So. We we do it for the awards. <laughs> Be, you are you that. making it very clear? <laughs> yeah, I just want it clear. The The reason we do this right. is yeah. trophies. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Let's get into the rewind. Weekly Rewind. All right, Weekly Rewind brought to you by Sleeper. What's going on with Mitchell Trubisky, Mike? Well, he left the game with a shoulder injury. His non-throwing shoulder and it's it's looking like it will be at least somewhat serious the uh, head coach Matt Nagy saying it's not a season ending injury but when your coach has to come out in week four and say well look it's not a season ender I mean he's, miss some he's time. gonna miss some time and, and Chase Daniel is not a great quarterback so I think the Bears get an upgrade here <laughs> I was gonna say unfortunately for Trubisky it wasn't his throwing shoulder was not so there's no chance for a rookie of the year situation for Trubisky <laughs> this is so brutal you guys are brutal uh he'll miss this week at a minimum he's having tests done we'll keep you up to date Josh Allen forced uh from the Patriots game with a concussion is week to week we'll monitor that they played them tough I mean both of those teams the, their defenses yeah keep them in games regardless of who's starting at quarterback I mean the Bills covered this spread. I think it was six and a half. But it, I mean that it might have been six, depending on when, you, what part of the week. But it was, and that took a special teams touchdown from the New England Patriots. Yeah, the Bills, I mean, this Bills was, are good. I was really excited to see yeah. the Patriots' great, you know, offense of the first three weeks against this Bills' great defense, and see which one is legit. And clearly, the Bills' defense is one that scares me to go up against for fantasy assets. Josh Allen, like I said, hurt. Marlon yeah. Mack left the fourth, uh, left in the fourth quarter with an ankle injury. Jarvis Landry exited the second half with a concussion. Which is, man, he was balling out. Yes, he unfortunate. was. Unfortunate. TJ Hawkinson. Oh, ooh, yeah. That was a scary one. Big time concussion. Did not return. Did score before the concussion, but hopefully he's okay. Yeah. Christian Kirk limped off the field at the late part of the Cardinal game. Yeah, it looked looked real bad. The the it leg. Looked, yeah, it got, got caught trapped, underneath yeah. him. Kenny Stills left with a hammy injury. Dontrell Inman left because every offensive player What's on the Chargers on, is currently injured. So yeah. We right now it's Keenan Allen. And they play Denver next week. Chris, Melvin Chris Gordon. Harris. Yeah, Melvin Gordon back though. That's, yep. 
at the right time. According to Adam Schefter, those of you who have A.J. Green on your bench, you're waiting. Uh, Expected to be out at least through week six. He's taking his time to get back from that injury. He's going into a – this is his final season under contract, and he is not rushing back to the the Bengals. As he should. Who play tonight. Uh, Case Keenum, we saw he was benched in the first half of this game, and then Jay Gruden came out and said, who do I want to sacrifice to the – God of the Patriots this weekend. <laughs> oh man. You know, dude, you can't if you're if you're Gruden, I know you're on the hot seat. I know there's probably a lot of pressure from management. You got to put Kate Keenum back out there. You put Keenum or McCoy or Colt McCoy. You cannot put Dwayne Haskins out there. You cannot do that to th- who should be the future of your franchise. His first start at just sacrifice to the Wolves. You I cannot know. do it. I think no, the can't. most valuable fantasy player this season has been the New England Patriots yes. defense, and next week they are just going to dominate. We didn't see T.Y. Hilton, Terry McLaurin, Mike Williams, Rashad Penny, Justin Jackson, Damian Williams, and Devin Singletary. Those were all the inactives. McLaurin, you know, some people believed he was going to play. He didn't. Hilton was doubtful, so hopefully you made other arrangements. Mike Williams... And company. We'll see if Rashad Penny can get back. Chris Carson had a nice week in Arizona. Yeah, great bounce back week. Uh, and a reminder, weekly news and notes brought to you as always by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of fantasy football breaking news. Download the free app today. Let's get into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Jason, you can just go ahead and highlight which of these studs were the ones to defeat you this week despite your high score. All of them. He had all of them. No, uh, Lamar Jackson was the stud quarterback that defeated me. In fact, defeated me thanks to the very late, very garbage time Willie Sneed touchdown. It, that was disgusting. Jameis Winston, 28 for 41, 385 and 4. This is the Jameis Winston you vi- envisioned Yeah. with Bruce Arians. This game was incredible. 95 points scored. And, you know, now travels to a seemingly impossible task in New Orleans against the Saints that was absolutely dominant last night against Dak Prescott. So, you know, has he leveled up? That's the, no. that's the big question. No, the answer is no. Okay. <laughs> We've seen monstrous, monstrous games from Jameis plenty times in yeah, the past. Yeah, 10 times, he, 20 times. He will, as long as he is allowed to continue playing football, he will have Monster games and really disappointing games. The weird thing about Jameis is you can't always predict. I mean, the Rams defense this week, they looked outstanding through the first three weeks. They were a top five defense across the board. And then Jameis goes into Los Angeles and absolutely lights the field on fire. It was was unbelievable. And shockingly, uh, it didn't feel this way through most of the game, but both Chris Godwin and Mike Evans could have a good game together. It only took 45 points, four touchdowns and 385 passing yards. No, I mean, there was doubt as to whether Godwin would even play in this game. I would have gone Chris, Chris God mode for one of those, one of those puns, but Winston with those two guys in Bruce Arians and in Bruce Arians willingness to drive the ball down the field. He had a great game, but we have seen great games from him before. And I don't think in new Orleans, you're going to be able to start him. Yeah, and I, Carolina's I, defense has been great as well. So the next three weeks is New Orleans, Carolina, bye week for Jameis Winston. So I am not chasing the Jameis points. I, I just I'm trying to give him some credit here because he deserves credit. The the past two games he's dominated for fantasy football. In the past three games, he's been a good quarterback. I mean, he, up the game in week two against Carolina, he was more of a game manager, but completed 64 percent of his passes, had a passer rating of 103. Just saying, like, if it will be, it's interesting to watch because New Orleans, yes, they they shut down Dak Prescott, but they have been allowing points. I mean, they got they have some suspect corners on that team. I mean, technically, it's, it's possible. I I am just throwing it out that I think it is possible that he's get he's figuring out Bruce Arians' system and he will in fact level up for fantasy. Yeah, the Saints have given up a lot of points on the season to quarterback and wide receiver this week, notwithstanding. Yeah, yeah, and we're we've only got a, a few weeks, so I I bet against Jameis Winston in a heartbeat this weekend. Personally, I mean, we've seen this fifteen times for him, but not in succession. So we'll see. 
it, it was very impressive performance for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the road in this matchup. So you do he does deserve credit for winning this one. And the Rams tried to bounce back multiple times. Jared Goff had 517 passing yards, three interceptions, and a fumble, 68 passing attempts in this game, which is the third most all time, and they lost the game. Rodgers, Mariota, Brissett, Stafford, Flacco all had impressive weeks. Anybody stand out as somebody you're chasing for future streaming purposes? Stafford's on buy next week. Uh, the, the name that I'll highlight is it's Jacoby Brissett. I mean, he now has the, the, the past – for the season, I should say, three touchdowns, two, three, two. So, I mean, multi-touchdowns in every single game. He's not putting up huge yardage, but – it's it's reminiscent of those you know the, the old school Aaron Rodgers games where it's 250 yards but he's giving you three touchdowns so he, Jacoby Brissett is very interesting it's on the road against Kansas City next week for him which That's, is not not the like playing in Kansas City is not the best yeah if you have if you're missing Marlon Mack and T.Y. Hilton again that will be that would be a huge yes. problem for as him. as a streaming guy that you could still get off of waivers I can't imagine much. A much better situation than having a guy who's three weeks in a row a top 12 fantasy quarterback having to play catch up with the Kansas City Chiefs. All right. Nick Chubb went bananas, as did Leonard Fournette this week. Chubb, 20 for 165 and three. The third most rushing yards ever allowed by Baltimore. You talk about defenses you expected to have good weeks. If you played the Rams, the Ravens, the Packers, you probably got negative points. And they did not show up this week. So, you know, Nick Chubb went ham. The Browns, very impressive, important performance for them, beating Baltimore on the road. Yeah, their their tackle, their defensive tackle, Brandon Williams, was out. That was kind of like a late addition to the, the injury report on Sunday morning. So, And when that news came out, it was, whoa, this, that's a big deal for Nick Chubb, and he absolutely came through. Yeah, it was it was interesting because this was a game – that you finally saw the Browns with a big lead and able to say, "Hey, we're just gonna we're going to protect the lead and run the ball a lot." Uh, he did his damage later in the game, or as the game went along and they and they were up, their defense was playing outstanding. So it's one of those things where, you know, in a matchup where they're winning, it's good to see that they're not going to just continue to throw the ball like crazy, but they they'll protect the lead and give it to Chubb. Um. We've got Jordan Howard with the big game from Thursday. Christian McCaffrey doing his thing. Austin Eckler maybe waving to the crowd. It as was he... an awesome swan yes, song. Yes, thank you, Austin Eckler, very much. Did he take a little lap around the stadium he, afterwards? He probably High-fiving his fantasy owners. Wayne Gallman did his thing. 18 for 63 in a touchdown. Six for 55 and one through the air. Six for what? No schedule. Minnesota, New England coming up for Wayne Gallman. But if he's the only back in town with the passing game involvement, he is not yes. going to goose you. He's it's, going to give you double digits, most likely, even in those matchups. It's the just, seven targets. That's very interesting. Yeah, you just won't have these touchdowns, which are pretty important. Yep. So Todd Gurley was five for 16 on the ground, had two touchdowns, seven for 54 through the air. But I'm not going to... You know, 11 targets is great. It's great that you saw that. He had 68 pass attempts in this game. They were getting blown out. So, sure. I mean, it, it's good to see him involved in the passing game for the first time this year. Has Seattle on Thursday. Todd Gurley, did your thoughts on him change at all this week? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess my thoughts were more confirmed. I believe that they were going to make a concerted effort to get him more involved in the passing game based on what was being said after the loss in or the victory, but after the criticism in week three about Gurley's utilization, obviously they, they weren't able to give him the ball on the ground a lot because this game got out of hand really quickly, but they were they were passing the ball to Gurley. That's the thing I've been missing. That's the thing I've been wanting to see. So, yeah, I, I, I think Gurley is going to be a fine option uh, if he's not injured. Chris Carson, 145 total yards, did not score, had 26 touches against Arizona, Looked every bit the guy and did not fumble. Yeah, you did it. Every play. You did now, it, we, Chris. We, we had the privilege of going to that game, uh, spending some time with the NFL League One team and the Arizona Cardinals team and being down on the field and watching the Cardinals, our team, get manhandled and destroyed at home once again. 
But we got to watch Chris Carson in person and every single play, an extra yard, an extra two yards, an extra three yards involved in the passing game. So it was a good bounce back game for him. Some of those bounce back players, Carson, Robert Woods, uh, it was nice to see that this week. You know, it's only week four, guys. It's week four. The whole season has not been defied, decided. And you look at, uh, you brought up, you know, Jameis Winston. He made a really bad week one impression. Right. He stunk week one. Yes. Had three good games afterwards. The inverse is true of Sammy Watkins. Monstrous game one, three bad games afterwards. Yet the impression from week one, because of months and months and months and months of anticipation, it's a strong one. If you're not smart as a fantasy owner and willing to adjust beyond week one, you're going to lose. I mean, you have to be able to make changes to your team. Uh, anybody else you want to mention at running back that had a, a nice week? Darrell Williams saved his week with a couple of touchdowns, but that was kind of the recipe for success. I wanted to bring up Kerryon Johnson, who had a monster game on the ground. And the, the number that's more important to me, and shout out to Adam Leviton uh, for highlighting this information on Twitter, since C.J. Anderson has been released, 73% of the snaps, 79% of the running back carries, averaging nearly 25 touches per game Woo! for carry on Johnson. Like they they let CJ go and they have unlocked carry on Johnson. They almost the, won this game too. The but one, he lost them the game. The one red flag for carry on Johnson was an extremely costly goal line fumble. It was it, you saw him on the goal line again that was fantastic news for carry on Johnson's fantasy value. But they yeah, they but, win the game if he doesn't do that. But have to wait and see what Matt Patricia and his axe will decide. Will he will he bring the axe down on carry on being the goal line back? And my axe. I doubt it because I don't think he's got an option. Right. That's part of it, uh, which is kind of what happened in Seattle. That's why I had confidence in Carson. It wasn't so much – look, if, you had a, if Rashad Penny had been fully healthy, I'd been scared out of my mind about Chris Carson – not getting the opportunity to reestablish, but carry on. I, who are you going to hand the ball to in right. that situation? 26 carries, 28 touches. All right, we'll get into the wide receivers. But first, I want to uh, talk to the football fans out there. Are you an Amazon Prime member? Did you know that you have Thursday Night Football, if you are? That's right. Thursday Night Football has returned to Prime Video for a third straight season. Cool thing is you can catch all the action on your TV, on the web, on your mobile app anywhere in the world and the experience is quote next level mike oh yeah with prime videos x-ray feature you can access next gen stats play history team information and get it on ios and android i love all the the games in the app i mean that's just very convenient and uh if you're ready to hear a new take on the game you can switch over to the sports broadcast legends hannah storm andrea kramer for the play-by-play -play. If you don't have cable or simply want to experience the future of football, tune in this Thursday. Cover coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern and kickoff is 8.20 p.m. Eastern. Also available on Fox and NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast subject to change. Thursday Night Football is presented by Bud Light Platinum. And we want to thank Lightstream. If high interest credit card bills are adding to your stress, there is a solution for you. You can pay off your credit card balances and save money with a credit card consolidation loan from my friends at Lightstream. With Lightstream, you can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with AutoPay, which is much, much lower than the national average rate of over 20% APR. Yuck. Ugh. Plus, your rate is fixed, so as rates continue to rise, your low rate, it's not going to budge. The online application is quick. It's easy. You can apply right from your phone and get your money even the same day you apply just for our listeners right now, apply now to get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get the discount is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers, L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M.com slash footballers. It's subject to credit approval. Rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. All right. Wide receiver studs, my goodness. Chris Godwin, 12 for 172 and woo, 2 on 14 woo. targets. There were some fantasy owners that benched him. A, a lot did. A because of the fear of the, the, the questionable tag. 
the hip injury, returned to practice Friday. You said the, a lot did. A lot did. I mean, I, yeah. I had late late Sunday, I had moved him down in my rankings. This was a guy who was genuinely hurting, missing practice in a terrible on-paper matchup. And is like, if I had a better option, you know, or it, what was perceived to be a really good option, I could see myself having done that. Now, I, I, I'm, I was lucky. I got to play Chris Godwin everywhere I had him. But uh, I could see making that move. I mean, he was the number five wide receiver in week two. He's he's I on pace the for number one wide receiver this week. He he might be the number one on the on the year at this point. One hundred and four reception pace, fifteen hundred and forty four yards, sixteen touchdowns, one hundred thirty six target pace. Outside of week three, which he was like five and a half fantasy points, he's been an absolute force for your lineup. Everything Bruce Arians is bringing to the offensive system is benefiting Godwin which we saw with Larry Fitzgerald in his time in Arizona. And, I mean... The Goblin eats, man. The Goblin eats. <laughs> Chris Goblin. A.J. Brown, three for 94 and two. Oh, do you, do you make much of that performance? This is kind of what you saw week one. Big play by him, but he only had three targets. It's, I think it's a mirage. It's super hard to start any wide receiver for Marcus Mariota with confidence. But it is good to recognize that the talent of A.J. Brown, which we all saw in the draft season, I think he was like top three for all three of us pre-draft, looked amazing. And then out there on the field, this is a rookie. and He makes these NFL players look like tiny little guys. I thought this was a tight end at first. He's just so big and strong out there. So you got to keep an eye on him, but I still can't imagine. His snaps have to go up. Putting he, him in the lineup. He still has not played a single game with over 50% of the, of the offensive snaps for the Tennessee Titans. Now, there are wide receivers out there, if you're at a, a fast-paced offense, that you can get away with this. But with, with the way that the Titans' offense generally works, it he, yes, he's going to do this. He can give you a big play, but, in, but until he entrenches himself as a full-time wide receiver in this offense, then I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine missing out on these big games. Yeah, and I, you know, this show I want to tell you what I'm doing in my leagues, and I'm not going after AJ Brown. I'm letting somebody else pick him up off the waiver wire. Buffalo, Denver, the Chargers. Yeah, no, thank you. No, unfortunately, a bet on Brown is a bet on Mariota, and that is a bet I am not willing to make. I'm sorry, Tennessee fans. You're playing well. Yeah, this was a good game. You deserve credit for the win. Go win some more games with your defense. Uh, Devontae Adams, Robert Woods. Thir Woods was 13 Bobby. for 164 oh, on Bobby. 15 targets. Bobby Woods. This is a game they had to throw and throw and throw, and Robert Woods was the leading receiver on this team. Although Cooper Cup had 9 for 121 yeah. and 1 on 15 targets. Both had 15 targets. So, nice bounce back game for Bobby. Can we just get Jared Goff to throw the ball 68 times a week? Do we want that though? Because they yes. lost. My but, fantasy team does. Yeah, I don't, I don't care a, if they I don't win. Care. I don't. We're Cardinals fans. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Go, take that, Rams. <laughs> Throw the ball. Bo boost up my fantasy team. Jarvis Landry for it went eight for one sixty seven. Odell Beckham Jr. didn't really do anything. Uh, Landry, what are you doing based on this performance? Man, I, I, you know, I think he's a hold. You know, you, you, you roster him. I. Certainly, you know, it's hard to start him, though. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, through the first three weeks, you know, you're talking four receptions, three receptions, three receptions. You're not you, – you were not happy with Jarvis Landry. Now you have this breakout game, and I think that you – I think you want to hold him and wait to see this happen again. It's not that you can't start him. He had 60 yards week one, 60 yards week three, so he's not trashing you. But I still don't believe that this – I mean, look, you just said it, right? Odell Beckham disappearing act. He was not utilized in this game. Do you expect that to be what happens going forward? No. Odell Beckham is going to be the one. Jarvis is going to be the two like he was through the first three weeks. But you, you have to hold him just to see if maybe there's more to this. Kenny Galladay, two touchdowns. Cortland Sutton, two touchdowns this week. Well, well, yeah, we where, where's your temperature on, on Cortland Sutton? You've been the most opposed – to him on the season, he is now the wide receiver fourteen I feel like and a half point him PPR. An apology. If they have to keep throwing the football, I mean they're an zero and four team, and Sutton's definitely been uh, contributing in a big way. I mean, 
Emmanuel Sanders, Cortland Sutton. I think Sanders led in yardage again. Sutton had the two touchdowns on nine targets. It's clearly those two players yeah. for, for Joe Flacco. So they have Los Angeles, Tennessee over the next two weeks. So I'm probably not competing for him on the waiver wire, but I, I imagine a lot of people will be this week. Yeah, I mean, he's he's on pace right now for 88 receptions, 124 targets, he's over 1,200 really solid yards. Year. Definitely. And, and, and the thing is, is... This was who he was drafted to be. This isn't some rando guy that's popping right. up, having a good, strong it's not first. Not Tim, Tim Patrick. Yeah, exactly. Having a strong first quarter of the season. This was a first round draft pick who was supposed to second. be. Second. Did he fall to the second? I thought so. Wow. Well, he was a first round hyped up yeah, wide receiver round. that fell to the second round. He was supposed to be great, and and he looks like he's you know taking that second year wide receiver leap. Yeah, seven receptions, four, five, six. Still a bet on it, you know, a bet on Carlton Sutton rest of the season is a bet on Joe Flacco. So he's certainly performing so far. Deserves credit. Austin Hooper, Ricky Seals Jones, Jimmy Graham, Will oh, Disley. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Ricky Seals Jones back from the dead. And he was open frequently. He looked good. Three for eighty two and a touchdown on three targets. Makes me sad for what Njoku might have been. Sure. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, maybe. But it's nice to see Baker utilize him. If you want Baker to be streamable, you've got to have more weapons than, you know, than he has had. So Ricky Seals Jones stepping in admirably. I am not chasing Ricky Seals Jones. Austin Hoover, nine My for one thirty on eleven targets. He's on pace for one hundred and twelve catches, guys. Wow, is that a level up? Uh, Are we seeing that? Because last year you had. A, a pretty consistent, impressive year. Joked about him preseason, being a top 10 guy, being the new Jason Witten of his generation. How could this happen? How could this possibly <laughs> keep happening if you have, like you've got Julio, you have Calvin Ridley, you have Mohamed Sanu. How could you possibly have enough targets to continue to go to him? But he was the tight end six week one, the tight end two last week, and now he has 11 targets. I mean, He's the, the, a top five tight end right now for fantasy football, and he's had nine receptions in two of four games. I, you, you've got to start believing. He's also my be, start of the week. Yeah, it's mm. a good start. You, yeah. it's it. The Falcons are worse than I thought they would be. Well, then maybe this is a result of offensive line issues because that as well. If you can't stay stay in the pocket, wait for downfield routes for Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones to develop. Austin Hooper has to be your escape valve. Look at Derek Carr when he's under pressure. Look at Baker Mayfield when he's under pressure. Finding uh, Ricky Seals Jones this week. If you don't have time to let downfield routes develop, you've it, got to find Austin Hooper, and he's very reliable. It is a really good point, Andy, because Matt Ryan has been getting crushed. I mean, it feels like every drive there's two or three monster hits he's taken. That offensive line is garbaggio. Austin Hooper, just this is a friendly reminder, in two weeks he will be oh! the fantasy footballer start oh! of the week oh! because he will be playing Arizona. I, I looked ahead to George Kittle's schedule, and he has a three-week span where he faces Arizona two Twice. times. He goes, Arizona, <laughs> somebody else, than Arizona, and George Kittle's when, probably like... When is that? It's towards the end of the year. Oh, oh playoffs. Better go trade for George Kittle. I mean, he's, those are the games. League invite, winner. He's inviting his family, his friends. Everybody you knew in high school come to Actually, these two games. I, uh, you know, as as a local person, we did get the email, uh, the home game here. They're they're doing uh, George Kittle bobbleheads, for <laughs> just the for first, in yeah. Arizona, right? In Arizona, they're going to be handing out a thousand oh, George no. Kittle just because they know what he's going to do. Seeing it firsthand, Will Disley being open on every play. I was making a joke to Jason in the stands. We're watching this, going like, it's nice to know at the end of any scramble drill. He can always go to Disley for like 10 yards. Yeah, he's wide he's open. just always wide open. All right, let's move on to the stinkers. Stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. All right, these guys stunk it up. They pooped in their big boy pants this week. Let me know if you're panicking on any of these guys, but Tom Brady. No, he played the Bills. Played the Bills, 18 for 39. Yeah. And he plays the Giants next week. Uh, in two weeks. He plays Washington, Washington next week. Even better. <laughs> Dak Prescott. Uh, they, I will call this a blip. I will not call it a blip. I will call it a uh, an important reminder that he's played very, very soft defenses. He has to play the he has to play the Packers this week. 
He has to play the Jets in New York. He has to play Philadelphia. So I don't think you're going to get the same. Okay, that's a fair point. The, hearkening back to the schedule is a fair point. I'm not saying that. But I'm not I'm not super worried about the, the, the Jets and the Eagles. I, I would be worried about him traveling there and then the divisional game more than he was. I mean, he played my – who did he play in the first three weeks? The Giants, Washington, and Miami. Yeah, so, so you have to have some – I mean, we brought this up on the show. It was a smooth road for Dak Prescott, and it, it's not saying bench him. It's just saying you you don't want to lock him in to a all time starter with three games, right? Against those defenses, and he's got no Michael Gallup right now. Jason Witten led the team in receiving yesterday, so that you know Randall Cobb looks over the hill. So just something to pay attention to sure. for four years. Deshaun Watson, fantasy owners, you don't have an option with Watson. You've got to keep playing him, but this was another bad performance. Same problem as Matt Ryan right now. He's being, he's on pace to be uh, sacked 72 times, which would be the second most in all time. Where was this last week, Deshaun Watson, <laughs> when my team played you and put up 166 points to and be, I lost? To be fair, it was most of the game. Yeah, I mean, it, they're, they're having some real problems here. I know they got Laramie Tunsil in there. But this offensive line is is terrible. And Deshaun Watson took this hard. He was out four hours after the game. He was still on the field uh, at NRG Stadium practicing. He is wanting to get these things fixed. He, this is a this is a blip. All right, Daniel Jones had a rough one, 23 for 31. That looks good. But he had two picks, one touchdown. It was an okay game yeah, it at was best. Fine. I mean, he had 33 rushing yards as well. It was It was okay. Where did he finish on the week, though, Mike? Uh, he's got to be I outside the top that. twelve. I can find that. Give me just a yeah, moment. Yeah, he's definitely some, some not people in the top flex 12. Daniel Jones. He's got we, Minnesota, New England coming up. Yeah, it's quarterback not, eighteen so far. Yeah, he's outside my streaming possibilities for the upcoming week, no, without question. Is, is that different for you guys? Are no, you, against Minnesota, that's no, not yeah, a matchup. And then New I England, so. Yeah. I are you agree. willing to drop Daniel Jones? Yeah, yes. you, you've got to. Yeah, I would not. You, you don't need to roster him for the for the hope that in three weeks he gets to play Arizona. I Phil, guess that's a reality. But Phil Lindsay and Royce Freeman once again split work. It wasn't pretty for either of them. What do you do with those two guys moving forward? Man. What would you do with your team? It. I, mean, I, I still think that Phil Lindsay is an RB, fringe RB2, RB3 weekly. It was against Jacksonville. Next week against the Chargers, it's not as difficult. Unfortunately, right after that, they follow up with the Tennessee Titans. So he's he's a, a, a fine depth piece, but hopefully at this point, like if, if you're relying on Philip Lindsay to be your RB2 right now, you should start making some moves. Would you rather have Philip Lindsay, who has been single digits in three or four weeks so far, but had a monstrous week three, right? Royce Freeman went down, but he blew up on Green Bay. Or would you rather have David Montgomery Mon rest of season? Who would you uh, rather Montgomery. have between those two? Yeah, I would rather have Montgomery. He's had a, a tough stretch of games, but you've seen the carry count, the the, the total opportunities, including targets, uh, go up. I, I think David Montgomery is going to continue to get better and better as the season goes along. Uh, Lindsey and Freeman will just have their good games and be yeah. mostly 26, disappointing. 26 opportunities, so 21 carries and five targets for David Mopportunity. He's things have gone up generally speaking on, on every week. They're going to have to lean on him more now. Right, with Chase Daniel with as Chase the QB. Daniel as the quarterback and just strategically what the offense wants to do, I imagine that they're going to lean on the running game in their defense to to win games without Mitch Trubisky. Maybe but, what they needed to do with Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> but nevertheless, I think it forces Montgomery into another prove it opportunity and he's been double digits although not spectacular at any point. Sure. I mean, I, I think now they can rely on their passing game a little more, but, uh, you know, tomato, tomato. Oh, man. Take that, Mitch Trubisky. Oh, he's such a, so mean. He, he, Mitch, Mitchell Trubisky was mean to me last year. That when I, when I said he was never going to be a great quarterback and I lambasted him and then he went out and threw six touchdowns. So, wait, you're, that was so rude. You're, you're mad at Trubisky for being mean to you. Yes. But he was only mean by being great. Correct. But he was only mean because Jason instigated everything by being mean to you him. You did start it. If he I was here, he would this. say he started it. Now, in fairness, he started it by being so bad. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that part of it. Sorry, Bears fans. Or congratulations. All right, we need to, we need direction here, guys. Sony Michelle, 
was the only running back in New England to get any semblance of carries in this game. He had 17 of them for 63 yards against Buffalo. And they have a, a very nice schedule. Washington and New York the next two weeks. Rex Burkhead did not get any carries on the ground, had one target. He was banged up coming into the game. What do you make of this? He, he was vultured by Brandon Bolden on the four-yard line. If you throw a touchdown in there, it'd be a nicer game. But obviously, again, another disappointing performance from Sonny Michel. 17 carries. Unless yeah, you're in a point-per-carry league, you're not happy with this week. Washington and the Giants are next up, as we have said, for the New England Patriots. I think he should be fine. Yeah, you the next watch the practice reports with Rex Burkhead. If he's still missing practices and dealing with injuries, you might see more of this where you're giving the, the complete lion's share of the carries to Sony. And Buffalo's defense is great. So you can't really, you know, so, Sony against Washington, against the Giants, those are matchups where if he's getting the carries, you're going to have a fine fantasy. 3.7 a carry is, is like – Made of – that's like in his dreams right now. That's what he did against Buffalo after the start to this season. So maybe maybe brighter days with those two matchups coming up. What do you do with some of these superstars? Let's go yeah, through oh, four superstar wide receivers ending up in the stinkers of the week. Let's make it five. Let's make it six. Oh, six superstar give me wide seven. receivers. Odell Beckham, DeAndre Hopkins, Adam Thielen, Julio Jones, Keenan Allen, Amari Cooper. Well, first – okay, so – we. We, let's narrow this discussion. You got to talk about Odell Beckham and DeAndre Hopkins because Julio Jones has been great. Like I'm, I'm not worried about Julio. It was a, it was an off game. It happens for everybody. But DeAndre Hopkins is like it's three weeks in a row. Yes, there's no functional advice that you can give for fantasy owners on Beckham, Hopkins, Julio, or Keenan Allen. They are regardless of what they did this week. There is nothing physically wrong with them. They're the number one on their team, and you have to play them. So They're there's going, nothing functional you can do about that. Yeah. But Adam Thielen, six targets. He came out and oh, roasted he was mad. the team for not – they said, look, even with the best running back in the league, there's a, here's a little tip of the cap to Dalvin Cook, you can't run for 180 yards a game. You have to be able to throw the football. All this money's invested in Kirk Cousins. All and here Adam Thielen ends up with two for six on six targets – and if you are a, a Diggs or a Thielen owner, Diggs had a pretty good week. Oh Yeah, Diggs, of course. Yeah. Of, of course Diggs puts up 100 yards on the Bears. Of course he does. But what do you do? Man, and, it's... And are these guys just going to switch weeks because the passing volume's so low? Yeah, they're... I, I don't think that either Thielen nor Diggs, they are trustworthy on a weekly basis. You can throw them in and hope you get the Stephon Diggs 100-yard game. But Adam Thielen is right. I mean, you can't... When their entire offense is just running the ball, because you have you have turned off the faucet of your passing game, like you you're not you're not getting any reps in it, and then all of a sudden you really really need your passing game. You're like, oh crap, we're we don't excel in this. Like this is going to happen. So like, the Vikings they really need to figure out how to get the pass. Like you got to get both of these sides of your offense work. You can't just be a running team. I, I don't believe in, in today's NFL. You need to figure out how to get Kirk Cousins going. He's had great games for you in the past, but with the offense that is in front of them, Kirk Cousins looks horrific. He looks horrifically bad, and I don't think that that's the quarterback that he actually is. I, I still trust Adam Thielen. I, I, this, this is the Chicago Bears. Through the first three weeks, Adam Thielen... He had 75 yards in week two, a touchdown week one, a touchdown week three. He's he's someone where I, I totally agree. He's he's not the dominant star so of do you, last year. you trust year. him as like a two, though? Yeah, well, I trust him as as a low-end one, high-end two. Wow. No, I'm okay. not in that one cat. You look at the four-game comparison this year to last year's first four games, Adam Thielen went from, and I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I saw it this weekend. He went from 480 yards in the first four games last year to like 170 I don't trust him as a one by any stretch. Mike, you were at No. He he is saving his weeks with touchdowns, and yet I guess we're just looking at it differently where you're looking at it, yeah, he scored a touchdown in weeks one and week three. I'm looking at it as if my wide receiver one has to score a touchdown, 
then he's not a wide receiver one. Like if, if, if I can't get a good week's worth of production just on receptions and yards alone, you aren't Here, a one Here's the numbers. Scott Barrett, put these out. Weeks one through four last year, 40 receptions, 473 yards for Thielen. And I know it was a, an exceptional yeah. first half. But still, 40 receptions. This year, weeks one through four, 13 receptions. That's a, that's a quarter. Right. 179 yards compared to 473. It's well, just trust. It's a trust problem. I don't think Adam Thiel. I think Adam Thielen's one of the top ten receivers in football. I think he's a monster, and maybe the squeaky wheel treatment w is what he's going to get this week. The combination of squeaky wheel with the fact that the Vikings are now two and two, they lost this game, and they clearly need to get Kirk Cousins going. Adam Thielen is actually just a really great wide receiver in real life in the NFL. I think those things are going to make it to where. He, he's going to be okay. Maybe maybe one is, is too high. Maybe that's gone for him, but I still think he's a guy that I'm going to have in my lineup everywhere I have him. Is Sammy Watkins a mirage, guys? Three for 54 on six targets, fumbled, didn't get into the end zone. Three straight weeks you were disappointed. Well, he was in the end zone. No, he didn't for, hold on to the ball. For a couple seconds. But anybody, anybody can get that. Like, I mean, through three weeks. The past three weeks, he was in the 40s. I mean, I don't know what he finished this week. It's probably in the 40s or 50s at the position. So you really did not get what you wanted from him three or four weeks. I still think you're, I, I still think you're fine here. Like Mike said, he, he had the touchdown that was punched out. It was an incredible punch. Knocked the ball out. Otherwise, I mean, if he, if he catches that, we're talking about, oh, great. He had a great bounce back game. It didn't. And, you know, he still got open on a couple of big plays. The upcoming schedule, Washington, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, the uh You've got the, the Colts next and then Houston. Yes. I I think that uh I think Sammy is still still someone that he's leading in targets from Pat Mahomes and that's what I want to trust. Fantasy owners probably regret not trading him high though after week 1. Uh yeah. I mean they have yes. to regret that, right? Yeah, Lots on the of offers was. came in. Yes. For Sammy Watkins and over the last 3 weeks you've had somebody outside the top 36 at the position. Demarcus Robinson did nothing. I was going to say, McCall Hardman did nothing. This was the the outlier for Patrick Mahomes. The Lions have a good team. Yes, yeah, yeah, they they do have a good team, but no, no one aside from in the passing game, anyways. Travis Kelsey had a, a fine game, but none of the wide receivers for Kansas City went off this week. It, depending on your scoring format, McCall Hardman may have finished with negative points. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, tough game by Kyle Allen. What you, what's your confidence level with DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel moving forward? They have Jacksonville on the docket. Not great next week. Yeah. Not, not great, Bob. <laughs> not great, Bob. I mean, we we knew uh, being out here in the Valley that the Kyle Allen love he was getting, great job, but that was the Arizona Cardinals defense as well. You're going to come screaming back to earth. Greg Olson as well had a miserable yeah. game. And yet, Christian McCaffrey. Carry, carried that team on his yes. on his back, and they so and good. they won. They won the game. Did you guys watch the Cam Newton video? I did. Yes, in yeah. its entirety, it was awesome. So it, it validated kind of the speculation I brought up before of like I don't think this team knew he was hurting when when you called him liars. Well, and so it was evident that he didn't let them know that he was hurting. But and so he also it, talked about that he couldn't run and move in practice. I mean, if you, if you're a coach. Part of your job as a coach is to watch your players and then coach them. I mean, you had to have known watching Cam Newton move around in practice that he's hurt. Yeah, sure, but that's different than lying about it. Yeah. I'm, I stick with my statement. <laughs> Did you you're, stake you're with your statement? I stake with my statement. Okie dokie. All right, well, Cam Newton's not coming back until he's 100%. That's right. what you got out of this video. And what was evident, and he said he couldn't push off, he couldn't run, he couldn't do the things that he wanted to do. So hopefully when you get him back, you're getting real Cam Newton back on this offense. And they're winning. Yes. They've won both games without him because they've, they've held on. Their defense is playing well. And Christian McCaffrey is a, an absolute monster. I think what, what the video did help with one, I mean, it it's a nice – look at the human being of cam newton i mean it was very honest very transparent which you rarely get from athletes so like, it's just it was very refreshing to see but on top of that what you're saying andy when he comes back you know you're getting the running cam newton the the fantasy stud 
Cam Newton will be back once he's once he's starting again for Carolina, which is great news because we would have no idea. Like, without this information, when Cam Newton came back, are you going to have confidence really to start him week that, one? That's why. See, I, I just – I'm going to be the counterbalance to your Ron Rivera bashing because, to me, it spoke so highly of the organization and Ron Rivera – that you're, you're in a position there where you trust your quarterback. If your quarterback says he's fine, which is what he said, and then you defend him publicly, that's a great coach. That's what a great coach does. You defend your guy regardless of what you know. If your quarterback says he's fine, you have to publicly defend him to the media. So I was impressed with that. When he said, look, I've got the support of Ron Rivera in the organization, it spoke highly to me of Carolina. But I, ever- like, I like Riverboat, Ron. I've, I've, never, I, I've, I've been a fan of him. Never called him a liar? I haven't. Okay. OJ, oh, hey, hey. But did, in fairness, I definitely thought he was lying. I did not I call did. him a liar. No, you screamed liar, I called liar, him, pants on fire. No, no, no. I called him a big, fat liar. Okay. Mm. Thank you for clarifying. Because the size of the lie was gigantic. It, it, As this show's gone on, I've become more concerned about being able to hold on to that bar for five minutes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I want yes. you. To, I want you to know that. Because I think, I think the seconds will tick by a lot slower when I'm hanging there. Come minute three. I'm a little concerned. You're not making it to three. Well, I'm going to do my very best. That's for sure. I want a long video here for YouTube, Andy. I'm do your concerned. Best. My, at this point, it's saving face. Can I make it a minute? Can I make it two minutes? I'm a little more concerned. Oh, at conceding. the beginning, well, look, if, if I'm hanging from a drone flying over a city, it makes my no- survival. Now, am I allowed to. You'll, you'll, I can hang as long as I want. Like, I can readjust my hands. Yeah. Of course you can readjust your hands as long as your feet don't touch so the So as ground. long as I'm not falling, I can do whatever I want moving oh, my of, hands around. Of course. Oh, okay. All right. Of course. Oh, you're back to fine? Look, if there's one guy in this office that can open a pickle jar, That's it's true. me. You've got the strong right? hands. So I'm betting on my large <laughs> mitts in this situation. You ever opened a pickle jar that was a 200-pound man? <laughs> I'm 194 <laughs> pounds, Mike. <laughs> Stinkers of the Week, presented by Odor Eaters. I hope I don't end up in that category. Odor Eaters, the best in odor defense. You're about to be a stinker. Uh, hey, if you have Matt, let me ask you a real question here. Vance McDonald, doubtful for tonight. If you are, you were so foolish, you, you held on to him through the weekend, would you pivot? Would you be willing to drop Vance McDonald to pick up somebody like Eifert tonight? To yes. save your I think team, you have to. Yes, and I then would. just go back to the waiver wire to pick him back up if you need to. Obviously, it's going to depend on your situation. You might know you already won the game, in which case, just put Vance out there with a goose egg if you want. But otherwise, I don't think he's going to play. I think you have to get uh, Eifert. All right, we want to thank today's studio sponsor, Everyday Studio Sponsor, PristineAuction.com. Robert Woods, a signed jersey for forty five dollars. Oh, oh. oh, Bobby Woods, they disrespected you yeah. again. Someone bought the dip. Every time he calls him Bob Woods, I told him he loses five yards per reception. What about Bobby Woods, though? Is Bobby's that a little bit better. Bobby. This Bobby week Woods. It, well, this week is a bounce back Bobby. Yeah. I was informed that the proper use of alliteration, you know, we were talking about all the, like if you had gone with yes. Marcus Mariota, it's just the sound. It's right. not yes. the letter. So if it, Kirk Cousins is alliteration. Yeah. So you could have you could have started Kirk Cousins, Mike. Oh. Wouldn't that, that have been a real thrill? That would have been unwise. <laughs> it said the <laughs> franchise this week. <laughs> PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. Tomorrow is our waiver wire show. So come back. Enjoy the game tonight. See if Joe Mixon and company can compete in Pittsburgh. We'll see you tomorrow, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.